to our uh, government employees, government officials have that capability and capacity to immediately adapt this uh, new system? That digitalization is an important journey that we need to undertake. Now, apparently, when the Prime Minister Saab has said one month, it should be implemented. One month. One month. Don't you think this one month is too short time? It's such an aggressive timeline. Yes, mm. that is right. But on the other side, the thing is, if you really have to have it done, we need such aggressive targets. Hmm. So that shows the commitment. How secure is the system of the sea governance? Because as you said, 40 ministries, that includes some of the sensitive ministries as well. This e-office is not available on the internet. It is Wonderful. a tightly airtight intranet. Restricted. A restricted intranet of the government of Pakistan. Hmm. Which are the possible potential areas in information technology which our young graduates need to adopt, learn and educate so that there might be opportunities in the government sector? The thing is, when we automate, we need new skill sets. We need? We need new skill sets. Okay. So it is a good news, not only for the existing people, hmm. it is also a good news for the people who, are, who want to get engaged in job opportunities hmm. in the government of Pakistan. How to prevent hackers from stealing your data? This world is like a police, a cop and a thief story. Mm. You have police to be, and a thief story. You have to be smarter than the thief. Mm. And that is what we do. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Assalamu alaikum and hello and welcome to program Insight in Venus English. Dear viewers in Pakistan, uh, there are certain developments which goes unnoticed. But there is an important development which has just taken place that is shifting of government of Pakistan offices on e-governance. That mean that the government business files correspondence that would be conducted through e-governance. What is this e-governance? Uh, last week, Prime Minister of Pakistan, Mr. Shabazz Sharif, uh, directed the concerned ministries that within short span of time, the entire government correspondence business should be diverted and shifted on e-governance. And when we talk of e-governance, uh, the concerned department uh, which is responsible for capacity building is National Information Technology Board. And that board is helping different ministries, not only learning, providing training, uh, giving them an e-governance perspective and relevant support. To talk this uh, all about what is e-governance, how Pakistani government officials, junior officials, bureaucrats, can uh, learn from this e-governance and how soon the entire process will be shifted on e-governance. We are today fortunately joined by the Chief Executive Officer of National Information Technology Board, Mr. Babur Majid Bhatti. Babur Majid Bhatti, a very warm welcome to Program Insight. Uh, so Thank you. This was, Thank you very much. This was last week uh, instructions by Prime Minister of Pakistan that the entire government business correspondence should be shifted on e-governance. Please tell our viewers that what is this e-governance and uh, do our uh, government employees, government officials have that capability and capacity to immediately adapt this uh, new system? Yeah, first of all, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, I think it's important to uh, have a background before we answer this question. True. Uh, why digitalization? Hmm. Because this is one part of the digitalization story. So the thing is, digitalization is imperative because if you look at the fastest emerging countries in the world, hmm. there's a very strong correlation hmm. between their digital, sorry, between their progress as an economy hmm. and the pace of their digitalization. So which both are interconnected, both are strongly uh, correlated. Hmm. So this actually means that digitalization is an important journey that we need to undertake. Hmm. Now, one important pillar out of three. So as, as we're talking about the third pillar today, so there are three pillars. I'll just name them two and I'll talk about the third digital society. Digital society. So we need to have a digital society, but that's not mm. the topic of today. 
than digital economy. Mm. So that is the pillar of how we grow. But then before we can claim that, we as the government of Pakistan also need to digitalize ourselves. Mm. And that is the third pillar called digital governance. Mm. Now, how to implement the digital governance? One important constituent is e-office. E-office. E-office mm. means our old office correspondence needs to be electronically transferred. That traditional file taking to one office exactly. and then bringing back, that will be over. That should not be there because, look, I mean, I've, I've seen so many uh, discussions on these topics, like people generally talk about, ah, uh, e-office is required because, mm. you know, there's so many paper wasted and, you know, so much water is wasted and that we can conserve when we use the e-governance and e Fine, cost saving is one part, but that mm. is one of the least benefits. Let me tell you more. When you're on the paper, one <coughs> person processes, let's say, up to five cases a day, mm. because it's human. When you write a letter, it takes time. Exactly. Then you transmit to another office, it takes two to three days for the case mm. to be transmitted. Mm -hmm. So it's a longer turnaround time of the process. When it is electronic, the same officer can process 10 to 50 With some cases real additional notes, it could be immediately transmitted. Immediately transmitted, mm. no transmission delays. Though not only the cost saved, but efficiency increases. Mm. The third benefit is, you know, you can always tamper the documents. I can mm. always... It's very remember? important why. Exactly. Uh, document could be easily tampered. Yeah, but when it is electronic, mm. nobody can change it. Mm. So these are the business cases, the need for the e-office. Now, apparently, when the Prime Minister Saab has said one month, it should be implemented. One month. One month. Don't you think this one month is too short time? It's such an aggressive timeline. Yes, mm. that is right. But on the other side, the thing is, if you really have to have it done, we need such aggressive targets. Mm. So that shows the commitment because an intrinsic human nature mm. is to oppose the technology and the automation. If I'm a government and officer... that happened in Pakistan in the past. Once Pakistan <laughs> yeah. Post was converted on this uh, digitization, yeah. so they paralyzed it. Exactly. So the thing is, as a human, we should face regime. We do as well. But the thing is the management of the country, the leadership, and I see this very mm. positive. They're going in the very right direction <coughs> that they have given an aggressive target, which actually means we need to meet it. Now, let me give you an even more stringent example. Mm -hmm. With that one month for the federal government to very be automated, tight deadline. the Prime Minister Saab also gave us another target. And they said, he said, Prime Minister House and Prime Minister Office must be automated in three days. And that, that was also done. part of the same meeting. So it is done and it is partially. We did it in one day. In one day? Yes. Because Pakistani Prime Minister's office has been automated yes, now. Yes. I love taking challenges. I said, sir, we'll do it in one day. And we did it. Hmm. Now, this one month, this will be done as well. How? Now I will tell you. Hmm. The thing is, when we digitalize, hmm. one part, essential pillar is the technology. Is technology. But from the implementation side, mm. it is the simplest. So the technology, we have already done it now. In the mm. federal government... That has been installed? It's done. So mm. in the federal government, there are 40 ministries. 40 ministries. And we have a footprint in all 40 ministries. Now. And the attached departments as well? No, departments are more. Are but I'm talking separate. about the division, the ministries. Mm. So there are 40 ministries. All ministries, we have already implemented e-office now. Mm -hmm. But now the next question is, will people use it? So that is about the adoption part. Mm. So that is the bigger challenge. Mm. So now with the directions of the Prime Minister Saab, uh, a strict order that we have to do it in one month. So everyone is getting serious now. Mm -hmm. So the good thing is we've implemented and now the ministries are seeking help. We've already delivered more than 30,000 trainings in the past few months. So the people are ready now. So it's more of the adoption thing, which we are working on now. That's good, uh, Babar Vijit Batisa. But in the past, uh, since you are information technology expert, not only expert in this field, as you told me, you have a diverse experience. Question is that you, ha you must have been reading reports of the cyber attacks. How secure is the system of the sea governance? Because as you said, 40 ministries, that includes some of the sensitive ministries as well. What measures could be taken to save our information and data from any foreign cyber attack? Yeah, a very valid question. 
Okay, the thing is, mm. when with every technology and these, you know, whenever we digitalize mm. and, you know, move towards the emerging technologies, like True. now we're using AI in this as well. So what happens is the new, newer challenges. technologies, newer challenges mm. and more cybersecurity risks do come. Mm. So the design of this software has been done. The architecture mm. uh, has been laid in a way that cybersecurity is an intrinsic part. It's, so, it's, it's very much there. It is very much there. Mm. So I'll tell you how. The first thing is this e-office is not available on the internet. It is Wonderful. a tightly airtight intranet. Restricted. A restricted intranet of the government of Pakistan. Mm. Only authorized people are allowed connections, point mm. to point and direct connections. Centralized hosting They cannot facility. share it with anyone. They cannot share. And there is mm. an audit trail of every transaction. So anyone who even shares and violates any rule will be detected. Yes. So there's Good. an audit trail of thing. And then, you know, before we actually give out any version or release, mm. so there is a process, not only that we do the security testing and audit ourselves in-house, mm. then we get it done from outside. And then we engage the agencies who look at it and give us a clearance. Mm. And then we go live. So that's mm -hmm. the way we, we are managing the security. That's good uh, that uh, this e-governance is restricted and it's not available on the internet. Tell us uh, that keeping in view uh, the entire government would be shifted as uh, Prime Minister of Pakistan said that within, uh, within a month, it may take uh, some more months. But uh, share with our, our audience that keeping in view this ma massive uh, automation system how much workforce and human resource do government of Pakistan need uh, in uh, information technology? What are the relevant fields that some of the young graduates must be watching this interview? So how to motivate, which are the possible potential areas in information technology, which our young graduates need to adopt, learn and educate so that there might be opportunities in the government sector. Yeah. But is up. Yeah. Thank you very much for asking this question because it is very pertinent that we talk about how we are going to transform the workforce in Pakistan. Mm, exactly. And it's not only in the government sector, it is actually as we proceed towards adopting and embracing the technologies, mm. we actually need more and more people and brains. Mm. And how we go about it, we'll discuss this. But the first, uh, firstly, let me answer your question. The thing is, when we automate, we need new skill sets. We need? We need new skill sets. Okay. So it is a good news, not only for the existing people, mm. it is also a good news for the people who are who want to get engaged in job opportunities mm. in the government of Pakistan. Good news for the people who are there, that they can transform their technologies and become mm. competitive in the world. True. But good news for the people who are not there because... Now, when we are embracing technologies, mm. it is not because it's, it's a common myth. People say, oh, we will get jobless. No, it's exactly the opposite. Mm. Because when we develop solutions and products, we need more experts who can help come design, development, mm. implement, testing, you know, execution, execution maintenance, operation. So we need mm. more people, even more than we can find when we throw out the job descriptions. Mm. But it also, it doesn't mean it will come in a plate. Mm. It, there's an onus on the other side as well. Mm -hmm. So when the, when the students who are listening to us, when they are going through their coursework, when they're mm. studying, what they need to understand is, I will encourage them to get engaged in the industry and gain internships, mm. especially during your semester breaks, your True. summer breaks. So do it because you need to understand what are the problems that we're facing. And then you should be able to come up with a technological solution, mm -hmm. a technical proposal of how this can be solved. We are creating avenues like hackathons and competitions where we can mm. engage the young people. At National Information Technology Board, we are open to even offering national internship opportunities so mm. that you come and see the problems and propose. And then when you go back to the classroom, mm. try to get assignments and you know the solutions around those problems. <coughs> and this is a smart way to mm. write on your CV when you graduate instead of doing some haphazard assignments, mm -hmm. do exactly what is required in the industry. And when you come for the interview, Tell us, this is what we know. So mm. this this instills more thoughts. 
So, Babur Majid Bhatti Sahib, there is a general perception about traditional government offices that they do not respond, they do not give follow-up to any summary, to any note, to any application, to any query uh, by the common people even. So, to what, what extent with this automation, uh, do you think uh, this gap between public and the government offices will be bridged and government offices and government employees will be swiftly responding to the general queries, emails and things like that because uh, adding uh, precisity, there is a perception that it takes three months to a government office in responding to an email. Yes, wonderful. Yes, the, the thing is, this is exactly the reason we are deploying the technologies okay. here. The, why we leverage the technology is, one is the communication part, hmm. but not only communication, also the services to the hmm. citizens. I'll give you an example for both. So, communication part is easy. We do have a citizen portal where, hmm. where they can you know, have people queries and people, complaints people can do that. But that is a very small one part only. What can they do? How do they get services from the government? Hmm. How we're leveraging technology? I'll give you example number one. The Pakistan government's uh, managed operation of Hajj this year. Hmm. The Hajj operation, 100% of that were, you know, the were done uh, through an app. We heard through the app and the system that we developed in under four months. So, Ministry of Religious Affairs, they they engaged us. Hmm. And we developed a solution with them and all the Hajj operations, the IT part of the operations. We solved the problems like you might have heard in the past, like Hajis were having a problem of finding their way back home exactly. after the Tawaf. They were also having a problem in uh, managing the funds, the, the residences of Hajjaj. Mm -hmm. So all of that was managed electronically. This was one. Another thing is Apostle. So we, it was just launched last week. Hmm. Apostle is a system in which, you know, when the students need to apply, for example, European universities, universities, exactly. So they need to go through a tedious process, which was manual. Hmm. Hmm. Now it is automated. So this is the service to the citizen that we are doing. So leveraging the technology. So this hmm. is how the digitalization helps. Uh, but Isab, are you confident that what Pakistani universities are producing in the field of IT, these graduates are capable of capturing global markets and global job opportunities. We heard there are some issues as far as quality of education is concerned and how to address that. Yeah, uh, there's a two-pronged answer, uh, a yes and a no. <laughs> hmm. the, the, I'll, I'll tell you first an external perspective. Hmm. Uh, during my past 20, 25 years, of career, I have spent most of the time outside Pakistan, so hmm. in the international market and in different geographical parts of the world. While I have hired people from the rest of the countries, rest of the nations, hmm. without discriminating anyone, I have also hired people from Pakistan. Hmm. So my first while you were abroad, exactly. Abroad, exactly. Pakistan so my first hand experience with the hmm. people who are coming out from Pakistani industry and academia hmm. is actually superb. So I have been Outclass. very pleased mm. with, no, there has one has been a one consistent problem, which I'll tell you, but otherwise the quality has been excellent. Mm. The quality of work they produce is good. They can work under pressure. But one problem which I faced commonly mm. is they work at the last moment, you know, when the deadline is, I mean, when I'm panicking, oh, please do, mm. then I get. So, but that's a separate story. So this is an external perspective. So they are competitive. They can adopt to the global market needs. True. But when I come here, I see a gap. You know, I, it's been a, more than a, a little more mm. than a year since I'm here in Pakistan. So what you see is there are so many graduates mm. from the market, from the academia, and they're looking for jobs, but they're not finding the jobs. But there's not a single office which mm. I have walked into and is not looking for people. Mm. So why is there a gap? So the gap is there because the the students or graduates or professionals when they come to do mm. to take an interview or perform a job, they are not ready to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. So that gap needs to be fixed. Now, mm. how we fix it, it is a responsibility of the government, academia, industry, all of us, as I just mentioned, offer internships to the students, offer opportunities so that they understand what type of problem they need to solve so that mm -hmm. when they come to the interview, they defend. When they come to the job, they are able to solve then asking for six months that I need to get some trainings. No, industry doesn't have time. It's a fast moving mm -hmm. market. So they need to be ready.
There is one terminology, system is down, I'm sorry, we cannot do anything. So how to respond to this uh, particular typical outdated word, system is down. <laughs> so what is the backup or the technology which can keep the system active? Pati sir. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'll give you an example. For hmm. Let's take the example of e-office. Hmm. Now in e-office, no one can tell me that the system is down. It Why? cannot be down. Why? No, I mean, any, any system in the world can be you, down. But something what I'm could saying happen. Is someone, some one end user, if tells me that the system is down, <clears throat> then all the system in all the ministries has to be down. Why? Because the architecture of this system has been designed it in a way. It is on the network. It is central. It is central, central networking. And it has been centrally hosted in a data center whose high availability has been mm. ensured. So there's a very little probability that it just goes down. But even if mm. it does, then there are regular maintenance or activities. But one user if says the system is down mm. and the other are able to access, the gentleman needs to, to be, be fixed. careful. <laughs> so this system will is connected through internet? This, no. E-Office is not connected to internet, but there mm. are many others. For example, the Hajj application. Mm. Yes, it depends on the stringent <coughs> nature of and the confidentiality and requirements of a system, whether it should be put on internet or not. Where you see Pakistan's future? I mean, as far as economic volume or financial volume, when we talk uh, in the field of information technology, with this space uh, of producing graduates, more and more information technology offices, companies, uh, you think that Pakistan is in the right direction as far as information technology is concerned? Look, the thing is, yes, that's right. The thing is, uh, it is true that there's a long way to go, hmm. but the direction is right. Direction Since is I've right. Since I've been here, I can see all the ingredients are there. Hmm. We have excellent resources, good talent. We have the government who is talking right priorities and strategies they're putting down. Hmm. We have the industry who is now willing to bring about the change because it's a business heavy thing hmm. as well. So the thing is, uh, we need to create an ecosystem Hmm. where the development, the technologies and hmm. adoption is business-wise feasible. So the business would be interested as well. Hmm. So we have all the ingredients. But when we compare it with the international market, yes, hmm. there's a long way to go. But we can do that. If we are determined to go, there's nothing stopping us. So, and digitalization, I can tell you, is the savior for the economy. Digitization or automation is the savior for the economy. Tell us about another problem which is called hackers. And in different countries, hackers do attack uh, some of the important websites. There is dark web and these all things. And there have been earlier attacks, uh, although we did ask, but how to prevent hackers from stealing your data? Okay, now let me again respond. First of all, let me respond it in a way. Hmm. Uh, there's been a perception that we always think negative about the hackers. Hmm. I mean, I, I don't defend They're any They're positive hack. people? I'm, I'm not defending anyone okay. here, but my own area of uh, PhD and my industry experience is from cybersecurity. So cyber security. we are not bad people, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. the thing is, we can, we can also take it positively, how? Hmm. Uh, you have seen the bounty models of Google and others as well. True. When I build a system, I want it to be foolproof. Mm. And if I utilize and leverage these hackers positively, mm. they can actually help me getting maturity of the solution from a cybersecurity perspective much faster than a person who is not a hacker mm. because these are smart people. They are smart so people. Smart. Hackers are smart people. So, you know, it's not only that they are bad boys, we can use them in good ways as well. Mm, in they cyber could be good boys as well. In cybersecurity, we call this mm. concept red team and blue team. A red very team and blue team. The, the concept is when I develop a system or an ecosystem or an organization. Mm. So what I do is I create a team which is called red team. Mm. And red team's job is to hack into mm. the system. And the blue team is the guys who respond to those attacks. Mm. So I create a team who is able to penetrate in the system. So mm. I know what is the problem in the system. I fix it. True. And those who are defending it, they actually, you know, get trained on if something happens in real life, which is mm. not managed, how to respond. So in fact, you know, these guys can positively be utilized as well. Having said that, mm. the answer to the question is how we prevent ourselves from the hacker. Exactly. The answer is, this world is like 
a police, a cop, and a thief story. Mm. You have police to be, and a thief story. You have to be smarter than the thief. Mm. And that is what we do. Exactly, viewers, uh, as far as government is concerned, it needs to be more smarter than hackers or thieves. That is the only option that our vital information, our system could be protected from these hackers. Thank you so much, Babar Majid Bhatti Sahib. And uh, dear uh, viewers, Babar Majid Bhatti Sahib is really an international personality who has an experience from Australia to the North America, Europe, not only in the field, but also uh, he has been teaching. Once again, thank you so much, Babar Majid Bhatti Sahib, for sharing an excellent information that could be useful uh, for all those in the government, outside government, government servants, and even the uh, general IT graduates that what is this automation and how it will help in further strengthening the economy of Pakistan. Till our next program, Khudafiz and goodbye from studios.